Uh, can you give us an update on uh, Saba and Thierry when they might arrive? Uh, still waiting on visas. That's that's the uh, that's the um, the process. Uh, Saba is a little bit uh, ahead in the process, uh, so we're expecting Saba uh, in the next few days to be uh, with us. Uh, Jamal is going to take a little bit longer, maybe. And is, I guess it's just because their nationality that, that takes longer to get the passports and then to get the, the P1 visa. Is that correct? Yeah, a few of those. Like uh, for Euro Europeans, it's easier. Uh, because they can get here and then go through Canada. That's what we've been doing with Tristan. So it's easier the process, and we can have them training on their own and you know and be closer. Um, then they can't until they have the visas. And so, if Sala gets his today, any chance he's in the game day roster on Sunday? It could be. I'm just waiting for news actually, and that that's a possibility. We're uh, we're just waiting. Okay. How did uh, uh, Shande look against St. Louis? He looks very good. Uh, his, uh, his quality and his versatility as a player is, is quite good. He can play as a nine, he can play on the right side, he can play on the left. So he's a very versatile player. Actually, out of that, he gets a lot of mobility. Uh, he combines very well, uh, whether it's in the right side or on the left side. I think he's is very positive. Is he fit enough to possibly start? Yeah, that's what we're trying to assess. Um, you know, the other day he played very limited minutes against St. Louis, so now um, we're just wondering how many he can play. Is he good to go from the beginning? Can he impact better in the second half, either 45 or last 30? That's what we're trying to assess. We still have one more day there in Seattle to see how he recovers from today's sessions, and, and we'll make a decision. So you having a long conversation with Noah Cobb yeah. out there today. Any chance we might see him on Sunday? Yeah, no. Actually, no. He's playing with the second team. We're talking okay. about certain situations that have arise. I mean, I try to have at least one, at least one conversation like that with players every day. Um, and today was no, and some others. But yeah, we're talking about situations and things that uh, I think he's improving massively with the minutes and the targets that we have for him in terms of minutes for this year, whether it's first team, second team. Uh, Eugenio is in charge of those IDPs and how they're progressing. And I think Noah is one of those that is progressing very well. And this is a very, very tough stretch of games for you all to close the season. Uh, the goal is to finish at least fourth. Um, how do you navigate just match by match? What's, what's the key to that? Uh, yeah, I, I told him next 10 games is 10 finals, but you have to start with the first one. You start to, to, to send the message that, you know, no matter where we are, home or away, we have to show the same mentality, the same aggression that we've been showing here and there through the season, certain games in a specific that come to my mind is Red Bulls at home, Philadelphia at home, Charlotte away, uh, Cruz Azul at home. I think those those games, even for some extent, uh, Montreal, New York City, uh, Toronto, the mentality of the team was up to a certain standard that we shouldn't drop. And the others been okay, but these five, six games stand out in terms of the mentality and the, uh, you know, the full commitment of the group. And that's how I need the team every game, uh, and that's that's a challenge for for the players, for us as coaches, is is try to get that environment where since the whistle we can be on the front foot, we can be proactive, we can be aggressive, we can be dom uh, dominant of the game, uh, as as we were in those games that I just mentioned. How have you worked on that these past couple of weeks? Uh, yeah, we went through different phases in the three weeks. Probably the first week was uh, uh, enough week because he was putting some players in balance um, f fitness levels like some guys needed rest actually we were able to rest a few that were international duties and you know especially the guys that went to the all all-star games we gave them a few a few days just to break down and you know slow down mentally and physically some others needed a bit to catch up and to have a more rhythm some guys played with the second team uh, and then from there once we start to kind of balance the fitness levels we start to work in certain principles of play um, attack first, the build-up, uh, how we want to play now with the new players that at the moment we have two new players but also Caleb playing left back is kind of a new player there because he was playing most of the time as a winger so it's different. Uh, now Abraham is starting to, to have some rhythm as a centre back, Muyumba then of course Shande if he starts, if he's not like he's going to be integrated in the team. Now that we know the characteristics of Saba, of Jamal, how we can put them in a system where we don't change that much game after game, the tactics, the, 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 the roles of each player and we're working on that. 
on how we're going to do things. And then, of course, uh, another week just probably more to defending, middle block, high press um, situations in defense that we felt that it was much needed. And, and then the last week has been mostly about Seattle and, and trying to focus on the game plan for Sunday. Has, has all this helped in some respects, like just having to break help you kind of prepare for this last kind of 10 game stretch, especially with the players that are coming into the team and implementing them into what you're trying to do? Yes, I mean, you can say that it's not something that I wanted or I planned sure. for, of course, because yeah. uh, for me, we should have won that game against Cruz Azul and we should have advanced and probably with them some momentum, you know, could help also in different ways, uh, mentality and cohesion and rhythm and some other different ways. But due to the circumstances, I felt I feel like we used that time uh, very well and, and the, the team feels like it's prepared and you never know until the whistle blows but uh, it feels like the team is in a good mindset, well prepared, hungry for results and, and that's how, how we wanted to, to get here. Caleb was saying that one of the focal points uh, has been in the press specifically. Um, do you want the team, is it a matter of just the team be playing higher up the field, like that back line playing higher for a longer duration of the game or um, what areas of the press did you, do you want to see improved? I would say different areas. You know, goal kicks, we want to press high all the time. Um, when we are kind of three quarters of the field, middle third, when I were, you know, you know, line of confrontation, the focal point, which is Yaku, is kind of 10, 20 yards ahead of the circle. Um, how we can press opponents and when we, sh we have to stay also patient and compact and just don't give anything to the opponents and kind of tell them, okay, you feel like you're too good to break us down? Come on, here's your chance. We're going to be solid in the middle block and then let's see if we can counter at pace with some specific tactics to get that and our wingers now uh, very aggressive in the transition moments. Uh, and when is better just to go full speed and press them and, and the triggers to do that and when are the moments to press. And then after that, it's not just the, the guys that are putting the pressure on the ball, it's the guys in behind following. Because many times we've seen Jakub go going to press, Thiago going to press, but then no one follows in the middle, they break us through the center meets and then we're broken. That's what should have happened. We, we should have a better understanding now. With that saying, you never know, it can happen once or twice, but we feel like the team is more prepared to be better in that side. I know a while ago you talked about um, the benefit of Ozzy Alonso being a player who can, as an experienced player, can help orchestrate and direct players You know where they need to fill in those gaps. Um, now you have a new player in Tristan who's come into one of those central midfield roles. How, how do you assess the job that he's been able to do in terms of all that communication and, and stuff that goes on in that respect? Yes, of course, it, it helps when you have vocal players, like especially in the spine of the team, the the, the pivots, the, the, the center mids, the, 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 the goalkeeper, the center backs. It's pivotal that, that they pass the message to the next line because they see everything, right? So having us in there, of course, he helps because he starts to see how we can press and starts to dictate and organize the the, the, the team. Uh, but having Muyumba is the same because even though he's integrating in the system, integrating to his teammates, he's being very vocal in different ways. So he goes on the side and tells something to Rosetto about how to press, and then he goes there, and then he's yelling at the team, hey, slow down, we need possession now, control. And he's showing a lot of leadership that I think is gonna grow with time. And we're very, actually very happy and pleased on that side from Tristan because he's arising as, as one of those silent leaders that organize the team very well. And we know how important it is to have someone like that in the middle of the field. What have your thoughts been on Tristan's performance overall, in particular just his ability to, to find space and help the team uh, break down uh, pressure from the opposing team? Yes, just like that. I think, uh, uh, you know, that first exposure against Cruz Azul highlighted many of the attributes that, that he's going to um, contribute to the team. Um, and uh, his ability to not just, you know, create a space for himself, but also for others, and at times isolating himself in that false fullback position, creates a space for some others to come in the middle. He's understanding when Thiago drops, he goes and attacks that that, that uh, space in between the lines. He runs inside the box where actually he did a couple, couple nice plays with a Meg inside the box. And, you know, uh, he, he highlighted his creative nature and, uh, and we're very pleased with that. 
but I would say that the best part of uh, Tristan so far has been his humility. He's been a, a guy that is always willing to put the effort, silent, don't complain, just, just, just perform, just do what he has to do at the best of his abilities with zero ego, like just, just, just coming here to, to impact the team in any way possible. Uh, at times sacrificing himself, his positioning, his, you know, uh, himself. And, and that's something very important for us. Character matters for us. You talk about uh, him getting in the box and, and showing a lot of movement. Uh, how much movement is too much movement? Is there a point where you allow too much freedom for him that you're maybe trying to restrain a bit? Yeah, not, not restraining, but uh, mm -hmm. organizing within the system. So okay. for me, it's, it's about understanding that exactly what I just said, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Thiago drops a line who's stretching the field in between the lines, who's making sure that their center backs are not comfortable with some guy there in some gray area and, and they cannot mark him. So if Thiago drops, maybe the center backs are okay, we're okay, he's not around, but now someone else is there. And then that fluid uh, tactical understanding from those creative players, right, um, I think is important. And um, so it's not uh, telling them not to move, He's telling them move accordingly to the movement of your teammate and then try to make sure that we're occupying the same spaces that we are, want to attack and from there be fluid because at the end of the day we want a fluid game. We don't want a, just a rigid game and system where everyone, you know everyone where it's going to be. You want mobility, you want play and move and sprint and I think you saw a little bit of that against Cruz Azul, that fluidity that just Tristan on his own. Uh, provides to the team. Now we want to put it in in a framework where everybody understands that mobility. What have you thought of Seattle this year? It's been kind of a strange season for them on some level. Yeah, strange, but still, when I look at the standings and some stats that we pay attention, they are top top two, top three. Uh, in many expected goals, uh, expected goals against one of the lowest in the league, most possession, most passes in the final third, most crosses, more shots. Like like they have many, many good things and, you know, you are telling me that a team like Seattle that is in a very good position in the standings and it's been a weird week, uh, season that only speaks high of the franchise that is being consistently in the top top uh, places in the in MLS. So I would say yes, maybe the last few games they haven't been, you know, uh, getting good results, but that doesn't mean they don't play well. They play very good and uh, at times, you know, uh, Raul's injury probably impact their their ability to score goals. Jordan Morris in the national team, so so there are certain situations that they went through. But now they have a roster, and when you look at the roster, it's pretty good. Uh, it's experienced group, a mature group, and a group that is going that it went in the last five six years together, uh, almost the same lineup uh, through many finals, to many important games, derbies against Portland, and finals and championship uh, finals that you know you know that those those type of teams switch on just in a second and we shouldn't allow that we should uh trying to to uh take that uh you know protagonism in the game away from them they're going to be at home i expect them being strong as always in the first 15 20 minutes in the front foot trying to put pressure on us and uh we shouldn't allow that and that's part of the game plan as well and they're at that point of the year where you want consistency in the lineup, but with some midweek games, with international windows, how important is the overall depth going to be in these last 10? Yes, I would say that I pretty much wanted that since I arrived here, <laughs> and I haven't gotten that for many different reasons. I was checking, for example, the last game we played last year against Seattle here at home um, with that great goal by Andrew Goodman at the last minute. Um, it's only, only eight players from there that are here in the roster now. So it's it's just you know how much we change versus them. Like they've been not, not more than eight, nine starters that have been there for five, six years. So consistency, of course, we want that. We want consistency. I think now we're in a position where we can get that. Hopefully, we can get that consistent exposure of five, six games with the same lineup and uh, same formation, same tactics. And regardless of the opponent, regardless of where home away, we try to play the same system. And then that's how consistency comes and, and the cohesion and many things gel out and we just we are just looking forward to that. You feel like now you're at a point too where you have that consistency maybe in the starting lineup but you have lots of different options to change the game from the bench. Yes, yes, I think uh, now when you look at our 
roster, even though we still don't have Saba, we still have Jamal. Uh, we have kind of a full roster at the moment. Uh, we have everyone available at the moment. Um, and we have way more options. We have uh, many players that probably want to start this game that they could perfectly be in the starting and doing a good job there. So you have many of those and then you start to have competition and then you start to raise the, the level and raise the level and then you start to have also players that can really, really impact when they are on the field in the last 20, 30 minutes of the game. So that's that's also important for us. All right, yeah. thank you, Coach. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys.